Hey guys, my plants are putting out new growth. Chickens are laying at least every other day. My yard is flooded. The goats are back in the field behind my house. That's my sign that it is officially spring here where I live. Today, I'm going to be telling you a little bit about my spring plant prep and how I take care of my plants in anticipation for warmer weather. And we are beginning of April, so I hope you find this helpful and let me know what your spring planty prep tips and tricks and habits are. So, <sighs> Before we get into the plant prep, I do just want to say a huge thank you to Ritual for making this video possible. They are a clean, high quality multivitamin made traceably for both men and women. They do have an online tracker where you can see specifically where each different vitamin and nutrient are sourced. They source iron and magnesium in my hometown. I I don't know why, I feel like a celebrity. All their ingredients are third-party tested for heavy metals, so no need to worry about that. Plus, all of their vitamins are delivered in delayed release capsules, which are designed to absorb through the small intestine as opposed to the stomach, which is ideal for nutrient absorption. So you are getting the bang for your buck, the most for your money. I do currently take three of the Ritual Vitamins. I'm taking the Symbiotic Plus, Prebiotic, Probiotic, and Postbiotic, which overall really helps to take care of gut health. The Essential for Women 18 Plus, which is designed for women 18 through 49. The Women's Essential 18 Plus can increase vitamin D levels by 43%. And their Omega-3, which is a DHA plus EPA, which is made from micro Algae. Here's what I take every single day. I'm absolutely not saying that these daily vitamins has been the absolute decider in my overall wellness and health, but it was a really, really easy starting point for me to integrate into my daily routine, my daily ritual, if you will. Ritual vitamins are one capsule daily, shelf stable, and can be taken any time of day with or without food. So if you'd like to give Ritual a try, go to ritual.com forward slash harleyg25 for 25% off your order. It is a great time to give them a go. You can scan my QR code on screen or head to the description box or pinned comment to take advantage of that offer. Even if you don't love your Ritual vitamins in the first 30 days they do offer a refund huge thank you to ritual for making this video possible but now let's get into my springy it's a new day i just took my vitamins ryan and i went out of town we went on a trip to las vegas it is time to get into my springy plant prep mumbo jumbo wumbo <laughs> some little extra things that I am keeping in mind and doing for my plants as I care for them lately with the seasons changing. So number one, I am still turning on the grow lights every day. The big thing about spring is it is the time of year I try to pay the closest attention to my plants because it's when I think it becomes pretty evident if there are any issues with a plant like if a, specifically if a plant needs to be repotted or I don't know, things like that, it's really easy to tell this time of year because this is the time of year that plants are really going to start to pop off. Just the warming temperatures alone outside of the extra light they start to get with the longer days. So if I'm not noticing anything growing right now, I'm going to make adjustments. And plants that just aren't really doing much, really my best guess is going to be one of two things. It needs to be repotted or it needs some nutrition. A lot of my plants are quite hungry and... Okay. Just to help give my plants a little bit of an extra boost and just really, really make sure they're getting everything they need. I do like to supplement with a little bit of Osmocote granules. I'm not doing a full dose or anything. I'm just gonna sprinkle a little bit along the tops of all of my pots. Just 
just to make sure that everything is getting what it needs to get. Also going to give some to my jade, just a little bit. And this guy, <laughs> this Adenia glauca is the perfect example of a plant that I've just been watching and something is not right with it. I have it in some codex substrate. It's like very, very chunky, very rocky mix. And I don't know if it even likes that. So I think I'm going to pot this one up um, once I, you know, actually, yeah, let's do that. Let's just, I'm gonna keep it in the same planter, but I am going to change the substrate. Yeah. I think that's the move. I mean, I got this plant last year, so I've had it for almost a full season now. It does have, I'll pull it out, it does have some, well, no, I do think it's drying out a little bit too much. So I am for sure going to put this into my regular potting mix. It's just gonna be so much happier this way. In this pot, I have a bunch of my like go-to all-purpose mix. I'm going to pour all of this, I think this is like bonsai substrate is what it is. I'm gonna pour this into here so that, so that the codex does still have a lot better drainage than just my regular mix. This is super chunky. It has like a bunch of lava rock, clay, I don't know, just a whole bunch of stuff. So hopefully this will help hold in a little bit of extra moisture. Cause I would love for this to take off this year. I know this looks like nothing. It looks like nothing. So again, it's called an Adenia glauca. If you want to look it up, they're really, really beautiful. Fill up my pot. And add la plant. Fill it back in all around. Really, in all of my years of keeping plants, I never got into the codex thing. So this is really my first go at it. There's for sure been a learning curve so far, but that's kind of the thing for me. I, I feel like it's important to like, I know sometimes it's hard to not kill a plant or not give up on a plant if it's been struggling for a long time, but Sometimes keeping it through a whole season can give you a little bit of a better idea of what may be going on. And like I said, I do think this plant was just drying out way too much. So I'm going to add a little bit more like moisture retention properties before it was just straight rock basically. So it was just draining out way too fast. I don't think the roots really had time to grow before they were drying out. <laughs> so hopefully this solves the problem. That was messy. I should not have done this on this stool. Okay. I think we're good. And I'll put it back on the windowsill. Weird looking little thing. <laughs> I guess really today I'm just gonna go around and take a look at my plants and get little things done that I need to do in preparation for spring. That's what this video is. That's what this is. Things I do to prepare for spring and why I do them. So this one is going to be <laughs> very obvious that why it needs done. This is, gosh, I forget the name of this every time, but I've just had this sitting in this empty <laughs> vessel with a little bit of water at the bottom for a while. And I am finally ready to get it potted. With having it in here in the water, it finally started putting out leaves. So I'm really glad I just decided to throw it in here and try that before giving up on it because that made me realize that this plant I, I, which I believe is a type of euphorbia, is a little bit thirstier, which yeah, holds true to euphorbia. I'm sure there are some exceptions, but for me, 
I just didn't realize how thirsty Euphorbia really were. They grow a lot better if I give them more water and enough light. The amount of light they get is really important. I'm gonna put some perlite down at the bottom to cover the drainage hole. Help stop stuff from falling out the bottom. Oh, and this is the pot I'm going to put it in. Should I bring it in close? I don't know if this is going to be a little too top heavy or what, but I think this might be a cool little combo. So we're gonna try it, we'll see. Gonna add in a layer at the bottom. This is actually a porcelain planter. Okay, and now to add in the plant. Let's see. I think I want it to go this way. Where do I want it to go? No, I want it to go this way for sure. Yeah, like that. And fill it in. Easy peasy. This one I am a little worried about because it's going to be very top heavy. So I don't know, I may need to go water this one right away. Okay, to water it a little bit. Well, fortunately I think it's gonna hold, but I need to water. Carefully. Uh, and of course, I've got to add some Osmocote, just a little bit. Like so. For right now, this is going to share a saucer with this small little Hoya Memoria. If they can share. Just while this gets watered, I need to find some more saucers at the thrift store, honestly. I really wish I had all of the planters I need so that I could have repotted everything today. We literally got home like less than an hour ago, but I'm feeling so motivated to take care of all of my plants and knock everything out. Unfortunately, where I prefer to like thrift or secondhand buy my planters, it's just a lot harder of a process to come across planters that can work for every plant. But um, I am taking a little like mental note of all of the plants that need to be repotted or potted period like this. Dioscoria discolor definitely needs to be repotted. Although I am thinking I want to hang this one from this corner. So I'm gonna keep my eyes peeled for a hanging basket and maybe like an, oh, you know what? I actually think I have the perfect one in mind. Saw it on Etsy. I'm gonna go ahead and place that order. But yeah, I, I need to repot it. To me, I think the biggest sign that a plant needs to be repotted is if I am not able to keep up on the watering. So the perfect example of that situation is this Ficus Elastica Burgundy. Um, there are a little bit of roots coming out the bottom, which really I don't think that that's a sign that a plant necessarily needs to be repotted because a lot of plants like to be super root bound. And I don't know, if you're keeping up with the watering, why repot it right away, you know what I'm saying? But this one I just definitely can't keep up with. It's drying out way too fast. I'm assuming the root ball down here is pretty gnarly. So another one that I'm keeping in mind as I thrift. For sure, the last plant, but maybe one of the most important or like dire situations is with this variegated Philodendron Giganteum. Yeah, it is so top heavy. The smallest little touch could tip this over. So it's getting a little bit, I mean, it's definitely time. I need to get this repotted. I just love the way it looks in that planter and it's hard to find bigger planters all the time. Although I could use this. 
That's an option. I'm gonna keep that in my back pocket. I'm not quite ready to commit this plant to this planter yet. Although, please, what do you think? Do you like the dark colored planter? Or do you think a light colored planter? I don't know, let me know. Cause this is an option. Um, next repot is this Abutilon Thompsonii, which is extremely top heavy. There we go. Now you'll be able to see a lot easier. Okay, move, move this. Thank you. As I was saying, this is my Abutilon Thompsonii. Uh, it's just in a cover pot right now, but I am going to pot it directly into this cover pot because it dries out so fast. I think it's going to like a pot with no drainage or do decently with a pot with no drainage, but we do have lots of roots coming out the bottom. And this one just wilts so fast. So it definitely does not like to dry out way too much. Um, so I'm gonna set this aside. Where's my charcoal? I talked about the charcoal a little bit more in this repot and chat with me video. I do just like to add a thin layer of charcoal to the bottom of planters with no drainage when I plan to pot a plant directly into them. That felt like a freaking riddle as I was saying it. <laughs> Unpot this bad boy. Ooh. Oh yeah, look at that root ball. <gasps> Looks pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna break it up a teeny bit. <gasps> what was that? What the hell? You guys, <laughs> what is going on? <gasps> Was it so that... It's like a freaking railroad tie. Okay, it's not a railroad tie. I used to collect those as a kid. <laughs> There is a giant screw in the bottom of that plant. What? That's like three inches. Well, maybe like, maybe like two, two and a quarter. What was that doing in the bottom of there? Was that to help make the... Okay, here are my two theories. Let me know if you know for sure, but my two theories about why this were in the bottom were Number one, I sometimes see people say to put like certain screws or nails, maybe it's nails, to the tops of plants to help give the plant a little boost of like iron. I've never tried it, so that's my number one guess. My second guess is because this is such a top heavy plant that it maybe was to like weigh the bottom of the planter down so that it didn't so that it didn't blow away. That has to be what it is. I bought this from Plant and Grow Nursery for any of you in the Northern Utah area. Um, it's from Plant and Grow and I feel like the owner there, the planters there all know very much what they're doing. So that probably was it, honestly. Although I've bought plants from them before and this, I didn't have anything like this in the bottom. I don't know. I don't know, I'm a little sus on this. But anyway. <laughs> It's not that big of a deal. Back to the regularly scheduled program where I break up this root ball a teeny bit. I'm just gonna kind of pinch all of the sides. Maybe break up the bottom a little bit. Yeah, just like so. Add in more potting mix. Maybe I should have stuck it back into the bottom of this planter. I thought this one would be heavy enough. Okay, and again, I'm going to water it. Ah. 
I am actually considering propagating this one, but I probably won't do that until I'm able to move this plant outside for the summer. It's coming up though, hopefully a month from now. We are expected to have snow next weekend, so I don't know, we'll see what happens. For now, I feel good about it, although it is still very, very top heavy, which is why I keep it sitting here just in front of the stressor until I can move it outside or until I can take some, take some cuttings and like kind of start from a smaller plant again. I would love, oof. I would love to end up with a super full plant. I mean, mine looks okay. And I have had it for a year now. Well, almost a year. No, a year. No, almost a year. Okay. Hi, Biz. Hi, were you crying at the door? I heard you. You're gonna get your nasty eye boogers on my shirt. You're gonna get your nasty eye boogers on my shirt. So not everything needs to be watered right now, but like I said, I will go through and make sure to give every single one of my plants, a fresh little sprinkle of Osmocote granules. I'll repot anything that I've been struggling with or that has been drying out way too fast in the winter that I like can't keep up with. This is the time of year I like to keep a really, really close watch and spend a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with each of my plants because it's the time when A, things are really starting to pop off and grow and whether the growth looks like good or bad, it's really exciting to see, but also that new growth, depending on how it looks, can tell you a lot about the health of a plant. <laughs> there we go. There we go. This time of year, I am thrifting like a mad woman because I feel like it's the time of year people really start to donate their outside stuff that they don't use anymore. So more and more planters or like big outdoor watertight vessels are becoming more and more available. So if you've been wanting to try thrifting for some planters, I think now is a great time. Spring is the best time for that. It really, really is. You know, spring cleaning. People are spring cleaning and us thrifters, we get to reap the benefits of that. <laughs> Yes, keeping a list of everything that needs repotted and looking for planters for them and then repotting those plants once I find the right home for it. Um, and then the last thing is watching out for pests. <sighs> I don't know about you, but where I live, it is, it is warm enough some days that I feel comfortable cracking windows to let in a little bit of fresh air. Well, not only does fresh air come in, but plant pests can come in, specifically like thrip and fungus gnats. I feel like aphids too can come in through the windows. With the weather being open windowable, I'm just watching extra closely. If I notice spider mites on anything, I'm going to treat an entire room in one go. Fortunately, my pest situations have been under control lately, so I haven't had to do too much of that. It's been really nice to be able to focus on the more fun side of plant keeping. Anything other than plant pest management is fun. The pests are the worst part. Really what it all comes down to is trying to get them ready to grow the best they can, as much as they can, as fast as they can, as wholly, wholly, like W-H-O-L-L-Y, not H-O-L-E-Y. We don't want holes in the leaves unless it's a monstera. Tangents, tangents. Um, I want them to just grow as robustly and as much as possible through the growing season. I wanna get as much out of this warm season as I can and I want my plants to get the same. So I'm just trying to really set them up for success by, oh, I remembered I wanted to do this, but then I wanted to repot everything before I got to this, but I do like to aerate some of my plants that aren't necessarily ready for a repot, but have been in their planters for a while. So I'll just take a little skinny, whatever you have. I'm using a spoon to just push holes like all the way down to the bottom of the pot. Um, just a few times, like maybe five or six times actually, in each pot to help add just a little bit of aeration because sometimes things can get compacted and even though the root system isn't necessarily taking up the whole pot, if the substrate gets compacted like that, it can be really hard for... My youngest woke up from his nap. I lost where I was at in what I was saying, but um, 
when the soil is really compacted, which can happen if a plant has a more slow growing root system or plants, especially that you let dry out quite a bit in between like succulents. So this ponytail palm is another great example because I don't water this all the time. I do let it dry out like pretty much 100% between each watering. So the substrate, it's not terrible, but it is definitely, it is definitely compacted. Actually, let's pull off these leaves while we're here. I need to cut a lot of these brown tips. Maybe I'm letting it dry out a little bit too much or, you know, actually I think it's getting too cold. Anyway, I'm just gonna take my end of my spoon and like push it all the way through to the bottom. Just to help make sure that the substrate around the root ball of this plant is really able to hold water so that the plant can get a little drink so that the root system can soak some of that water up. Otherwise, if the substrate dries out repeatedly and repeatedly to 100% or near 100%, then slowly it just, be, the, the soil becomes like kind of hydrophobic, but also it like clumps up and then it can be really hard to rehydrate. So I do like to do this, especially before the spring season. Actually, I also like to do it as I bring plants in for the winter time, but yeah, just to make sure that nothing is getting too rock solid down around the root systems. Otherwise the roots will not get water except along the outside of the pot. Yes, it's important to make sure that they are able to get some water. <laughs> Okay, let's do this one too. Since we're here and this is a plant I am a little bit extra aware of like we talked about. I mean, I can still get this down there. So there's definitely still some room for the roots. Although, yeah, it's getting close. I think we'll be having a planty slash home decor thrifting extravaganza soon here on my channel. Maybe we'll, I'll take you along with me to all of my favorite thrift shops in the Salt Lake area, specifically for like planters and of course any other little home decor things I find. But yeah, I always have a blast doing that. Let me know if you would love to come along with me while I thrift. I've done a few things like that in the past. I need to go soon. It's time, it's time. I'm running out of containers. Really, my spring planty prep isn't anything too outside of the ordinary. I guess really the main things I'm doing are watching out for repots and repotting what needs to be, giving them a boost of nutrients via Osmocote granules, which I will link down below. You guys saw, I like to buy the big bag of it because it's gonna last me a long time and then I don't have to think about it. I do add this to my plants twice a year-ish. Works really well, plants seem to do well on it. You just gotta be very careful to follow the instructions on the bag because it can burn plants, but it's really easy. Just sprinkle a tiny little bit on top, water it through and you're good. And then also aerating the tops of my plants. And I guess there's four things because I am also watching for plant pests. Oh, and you know what? There's five things because I'm also making sure to spend time enjoying the fruits of my labor. Like really, this is the best time of year to be a plant keeper because all of the time, all of the energy and effort and hard work we put into our plants, really right now is when spring, summer is when we get to see all the benefits of the care we've been giving them. So it's really fun, it's really rewarding. This is the best. This is the most wonderful time of the year. I don't care what the song says. Springtime is the most wonderful time of the year. 
Everything that I use for my plants will be linked down in the description box. Please don't forget to check out Ritual using my link or QR code. It is very helpful for my channel if you use my link. If there's anything special that you guys do to take care of your plants or prepare your plants for the growing season, please share a comment down below. It's super helpful. I always get so many amazing tips down there and oh, I just love this community. Yeah, that is going to be it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye!